Hello, this is Michael Devlin with the Michael Devlin Group and a short update on what's going on in the Santa Clara County real estate market for November of 2020. We're going to look at prices, we're going to look at inventory, we're going to look at the number of sales compared this year to last year, all that kind of good stuff. So let's get to it. All right, let's take a look at what's happening in the Santa Clara County real estate market. It's December, which means we know, well, we know what happened in November, at least by now. And we're going to look at prices and sales and inventory and all sorts of fascinating things. Let's start with home sales. Were they up? Are they down? Are they about the same year over year? Well, it sort of depends on how you want to look at it. If we look at how many homes have sold from January 1st to the end of November for 2020, and then compared that to 2019, it's about flat, right? It's down just a little bit, about 1% overall. If we look, however, about the sales from November of 2020 and compared that to November of 2019, they're up a lot. 29% for single family homes, 21% for condominiums, 14% for townhomes. So what's happened is that there was a period of time when we weren't selling very many homes and it sort of pushed, <coughs> excuse me, pushed the market. <coughs> it pushed the market to later in the year. Now, where the sales are, it's also one, one way to look at it is what price ranges are most of the sales occurring? And one of the interesting things I noted is, is that in the $2 million to $3 million price range, the number of sales were up 78%. There were 171 homes that sold in that price range in November of 2020. Also, a lot of sales, 205, were in the $1.2 to $1.4 million range. That's up 39%. And the 800 to $1 million range, that's up, well, not at all, but it's still 226 sales, which is the largest number. The only reason that number is not higher is because we don't have enough homes in that price range to sell to people. Now, these sales also can be broken down by what areas, what areas are hot and what areas are not. So I took all of the areas of Santa Clara County that had more than a double digit appreciation in terms of the number of sales leading the pack to Santa Teresa at 82%, Willow Glen always strong at 63%, Los Gatos and Monte Sereno, the high end market is doing well, 53%, Morgan Hill, Gilroy, San Martin, a lot of people are realizing they can live there and telecommute and it's very nice, 44% increase, 40% for Santa Clara, 39% for Cupertino, 38% and 38% for Blossom Valley, Saratoga, and on we go. What about prices? I'll bet they're up. Just going to take a shot at that. Well, they are. The median price for a single family home in November of 2020 was $1,375,000. That's up $125,000 or 10% year over year. Condominiums are even up more, 14%, and townhomes astonishingly showed a slight drop. That's the median price. And of course, the median price is the price in the middle. Sometimes we use that for looking at trends because it's a little more stable than average. Average prices can fluctuate a lot. If you have one $20 million house that sells, for example, it throws the average off, but not the median so much. But still, looking at the average price of a single family home in November of 2021, $1,764,000 in some change. That's up 17% year over year. Townhomes still down. Sales volume asks the question, if we added up all of the values of all of the homes that have sold, what would that look like? Well, that's even higher. That's a 51% increase, almost five hundred, almost $600,000 difference in single family homes, a 50% increase. So it's not just that the properties are selling, but the ones in the higher end, the values are going up. The volume is increasing significantly, 51% year over year. That's a lot more than the increase in the number of sales. The sales to list price ratio asks the question, did they, when they sold their property in November of 2020, did they get 100%? Did they get more than what they were asking? And you can see it was more for virtually all of the, for all of the categories. But the single family homes on average 
sold for three and a half percent more than they were listed for, 1.2 percent on average above list price for condominiums, and just a half of a percent above list price for, for townhomes. Now, the thing about averages is that sometimes it's never the average. In other words, very few properties actually sold for 3% more or whatever the average is. Looking at the top, we see that there was a house last month on Sunkiss that was listed for $3,295,000, but it sold for 3.9. That's a whopping $605,000. They got more than what they had listed it for. That's, but that was only 18% above the list price. A property on Hawkins, which was listed for just a smidge under 1.2, sold for 2,575,000, 587,000 or 30% more than what it was listed for. Balancing that out a bit, there is a property that was listed on Bryant for $18.5 million, but only sold for $17, $1,500,000 under the list price, which was 8%. But the property on Laurel Glen was the one that was sold for the highest percentage under list price. Now, again, we're talking about big numbers here, 18.5, but it sold for $2,500,000 under list price, which was 14% less than where they started. And you understand averages are just averages. Your mileage, well, your mileage may vary a lot. Let's look at how many dollars people got per square foot, because I know you're wondering, what's my house worth with all of this? Well, if you know your square footage, and it's a single family home, multiply it by $884. That's 10% higher than what it was in 2019. Inventory, are there any homes to buy? Well, obviously there's gotta be some because we're, our sales are up, but the number of listings actually increased in November of 2020 compared to November of 2019. Now, to be fair, in a normal market, which we're not in, sales start to drop off in September and October, November, particularly December at the end in the winter swing, but things have been pushed further back in the calendar because we had period of time when we weren't selling anything. But you can see the number of new listings is up significantly year over year for November. The months of inventory asks the question, if we stop adding properties on the market, Right, so we looked at what our current inventory is and we divided it by the number of sales that we had in the last 30 days. How many months of inventory do we have? Notice for single family and condominiums, that's under one month, right? 2.3 for townhomes, there's a lot more going on in the townhome market. So what makes a market a normal market versus a seller's market versus a buyer's market? Well, those, those, there's different opinions, let me just say. But normally we would say that if you have three or four months of inventory, that becomes more of a normal market, three or four months of inventory. Um, and some people think you need six months of inventory before it's normal. And even more than that, and before, before it becomes a buyer's market, Obviously, with less than a month of inventory, this is still a strong seller's market in Santa Clara County. How long did it take for a house to sell in November of 2020? 15 days for condos, 11 days for townhomes, and only eight days for a single family home, which is a lot less than it was last year. Houses are selling very quickly. And the total number of active listings that we ended up with at the end of November is down for single family homes by 24%, up a bit by uh, for condos, but down for townhomes. This is part of the problem. The, the, there are, were more listings, but because there were a lot more sales, the total number of active listings is actually very low. And if we look at how many were under contract, people have made offers and the offers have been accepted, you can see that's up a lot too. For single family homes, 24%, townhomes, 42%. There are a lot of offers that have been made and accepted on properties in November of 2020. So summary, sales are up, the prices are up, and inventory is still down. If you've been sitting on the fence thinking about selling a property, now may be the time to move. 
Um, I'm just saying it's a good market. Well, that's what I look like uh, when I'm not sitting in front of my fireplace. If you're interested in getting more information about what's happening in the Santa Clara County real estate market or that, for that matter, anywhere in the Bay Area, reach out to me. If, uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video, and then even hit that little bell so that when I produce more videos, you'll be the first one to know.